kind of a big announcement. Southern Miss and Mississippi State, this was a release from Southern Miss, are going to continue their non-conference football series. Had a couple of games on the schedule for, uh, what, this coming year and then 2025. So 2023 and 2025. Right. And they are going to continue. And that's part of a a three-game set that started in 2019. So it was 2019, 2023 in Starkville and 2025 in Hattiesburg. Okay, so the first two were in Starkville and the, the third was in Hattiesburg. And that's what Mississippi State had done previously, right? Mm-hmm. It was a, it was not a home and home. It was a two for one. Is that right? That's, Who was it? Is it? It was that was it was home and home fourteen fifteen. So the original one was fourteen. It was not fourteen fifteen nineteen for the two for one. No, it was nineteen okay. twenty three twenty five for the two for one. Um. So cool. The, these two will continue to be playing. They're going to play in 2030 and 2031. But didn't we already know this? We did already know this. I don't know how this, and I, and I, I saw my buddy Brandon Marcello tweet it this morning, and I texted him, I was like, this, this was announced last year. And he was like, what? And so evidently Southern just released a bunch of games today, and maybe there had been no formal announcement, but... This this series, it, the, the, people had known it was going to happen going back to last February. So I don't know why it became a buzz today. But, yes, yeah, State has another one and one Because that's the thing I remember railing on on a, a few podcasts and probably on this show of why is Mississippi State giving Southern Miss a one for one. doesn't make any sense. No, State should not, and State is doing it with Troy as well. State Mississippi State, no SEC school, should do a one for one with a, uh, a group of five school. I don't care who it is. I don't care if they're in-state or not. Auburn wouldn't do it with Troy. Alabama wouldn't do it with South Alabama. LSU doesn't do it with ULL. They all they come to Tiger Stadium, or that's that. And I know Southern Miss fans aren't going to want to hear this, but I'm sorry it's not 1985 anymore, and, and it's just, it just isn't. we got to move forward. And you know, I personally don't have an issue going to Hattiesburg, but it should definitely be a part of a two-for-one. It, it, there's, no, there's no reason for it to be one-for-one. I don't know, like I said, I don't understand why it became a thing today. Here's what I, I think happened. I think the, the release was basically Southern Miss saying these are the upcoming series dates. And I think this was the first time that Southern Miss had officially announced that they're playing Alcorn State on September 2nd to open this coming season, I think. But the way that the release was written, the University of Southern Miss, uh, Mississippi announced Tuesday the addition of three upcoming home-and-home football series against Mississippi State, USF, and Jacksonville State, along with two home games against Alcorn State. I, I don't know if the others were previously known or not. Right. But... I mean, it, it was a quick Google search. Boy, I found a story from February 6, 2022 that said, this was from WDAM in Hattiesburg, actually. University of Southern yeah. Mississippi and Mississippi State will be playing football into the next decade. According to FBSschedules.com, the schools have agreed to another home-and-home series for the 2030 and 31 seasons. So, And maybe, you know, of- FBSschedules.com, maybe not the most reputable source, but they do know schedules. That's what they do for, for a living up there. Yeah, that's kind of what they, they do. I mean, I just, yeah, I, I just, when I saw it getting tweeted around, I was just like, what is going on? My, I know I'm not crazy. And then uh, on the 24-7 Mississippi State Board, somebody found a, like a 10-page thread, and they were like, yeah, we were talking about this last year. Hmm. Is there a rule preventing you from having eight home games or something? State has eight home games next year. Because I'm looking at the future schedules. Ole Miss has a road trip at Charlotte in 26. Charlotte. That makes no sense. They go to Yukon in 27, and that appears to be a home and home. Sense. They go to South Alabama in 29. That's one that we talked about years ago that made no sense. And people were like, well, you know, recruiting Gulf Coast. I mean, that, that's a 
It's not 1968 anymore. Like, there's cell phones. Yeah. There's... Every game is televised. Yeah. You're not allowed to bring your – somebody mentioned that for the state and Southern. Like, oh, you know, some recruits can show up. Those recruits will be hosted by Southern Miss. You can't host recruits on a road game. No, I mean, the idea is just presence about? in a particular footprint. But, I mean, with every single game available on television, it, yeah. it doesn't make sense. Is the answer exclusively money? But I guess my question would be, how much are you actually saving? Well, here, here's, here's the way the money on it works. In a home-and-home home scenario with Mississippi State Southern Miss, Mississippi State will only – pay Southern Miss a small guarantee to come and play in Starkville. And so they will save that million and a half dollars or so that they would have paid Troy, for example, to come to Starkville. But the trade-off for Southern Miss is that they will get a big ticket game with Mississippi State coming to Hattiesburg. That's the other and, thing to consider. A lot of some state fans are talking about, oh well, we'll just take over the stadium. No, you won't. Southern will not allow that to happen. They're going to make you buy a season ticket package. They're going to make you have, be an Eagle Club member or something like that. They're they're not going to allow twenty five thousand Mississippi State fans to buy single game tickets to this game. That's not going to happen. As, and then they shouldn't. Let me make that clear. They shouldn't. They you know they should do everything they can to protect their home field advantage. So Southern misses future non conference schedules this season. They'll have Alcorn State. In week one, they are at Florida State in week two. They've got Tulane at home on September 16th, and they will travel to Mississippi State on November 18th. 2024, at Ohio State, Southeastern Louisiana, USF, at Jacksonville State. 2025, they will host Mississippi State, go to Louisiana Tech, and host Jacksonville State. And then they've got Alcorn State to open the season in 2026. They've got a road trip to Auburn, a home game against Louisiana Tech, and a road trip to Tulane. Scott Strickland years ago explained that this was a financial decision in their scheduling model when they did the two-for-one. They paid the smaller guarantee for Southern Miss coming to Hattiesburg twice, and in exchange they went to Hattiesburg one time. But in terms of just a home and home, I I don't know how you make the dollars make sense there. Yeah, I don't get. I, I get Tulane. I, Tulane makes sense. New Orleans is different. That that's going to be <coughs> Ole Miss going to to Tulane makes sense. That will be a fun weekend for fans. Charlotte won't. I mean, there's alumni Charlotte's in Charlotte that the, and they'll enjoy. But how many people are picking up and flying? The overwhelming majority of your season ticket holders don't live on the eastern seaboard. So how many are going to get on an airplane and fly to Charlotte to watch your team beat Charlotte by 50 points? You know, I, I, that's – I don't understand that. You, you've got USC, like Lincoln Riley's USC on your future schedule. You're going to Los Angeles to play in the Coliseum. And you're also going to Charlotte. And you're also going to Mobile. Uh, the it, I would love to get a, a real answer for why it's not a two-for-one, why it's a home-and-home home with those programs, because it does not make sense unless you're strapped for cash and it's a big-time money saver. I mean, I guess yeah. I get that. But going to play at South Alabama, just not that Mobile's a bad place. Not that Char- Charlotte's cool. Like, I've got family in Charlotte. It's a great city. It still doesn't make any sense. Yeah, and I don't know that I, – I mean, I would not think that that game would be played at, what is it, Bank of America Stadium or whatever. I mean, uh-huh. I'm assuming it's going to be on Charlotte's campus. Mm-hmm. What what year is that, Borky? That's uh, 2027. No, that's that's not right. 26. 2026. They're at UConn in 27. What? what I mean, what are you doing going to UConn? Stores is lovely. Uh, re- recruiting hotbed up there? No, You're getting not. all those Connecticut kids? They don't even play their football games in stores. They play them in Hartford. Their football Never stadiums in that. Hartford. Wrenchler Stadium. Catch a Whalers game. Yeah. Yeah, I, 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 I do know that it's hard to do the, the future scheduling thing, and there's a lot of negotiation that happens in that. But I do feel like I – mean, I mean, 
can, can Ole Miss and Mississippi State negotiate in exactly the same way that Georgia can? No, probably not. But you're still in the SEC. I feel like you're negotiating from a, uh, a position of strength. This is great news for Southern Miss. They get the uh, the home and home with uh, with Southern Miss. Sports Talk are with Mississippi State. We'll be back. 